Welcome to another episode of Southern Dirt Motorsports. We're back up Golden Mountain Speedway. Been a lot of questions asked about uh, the status of it. So I've got Deke Waters. He's he's one of the owners of the place. He, his dad, and uh, Mr. Uh, Don Adam, they are the, we're fortunate enough to have them as owners of this place. So Deke's going to catch us up the speed of uh, where he's come from, what he's done, where he's at with it right now, and uh, what his future forecast is. So Deke? Uh, yeah, we uh, we got the dirt pulled back up. We got uh, Nathan Whitaker to uh, thank you for that because he, uh, with Gold Mountain Excavating, he got the dirt pulled up pretty quick. Uh, helped us out there. We still got to do a little TLC to the dirt. Got to get the a rock helm run through it and get a lot of the rock out. Uh, and then we got to get a sheet's foot and pack it down and wet it. Uh, get it back up to par to where it's nice and smooth and grade it. Um, and then we've got the walls painted. Uh, probably got to put another coat on those, but they look a lot better since they've been painted. Uh, still got to get the time and loop put in. That guy's supposed to be here in about a week and a half. Uh, and then he's also going to help us with the scoreboard because uh, we know it works. It's just uh, getting everything to communicate together. Um, and then uh, we also got uh, insurance uh, set up for the racetrack. Uh, we're still waiting on it for the off-road part, but it's getting closer too. So. Uh, I understand too that you've got your PA system. Yep. Yeah, working we, now too. Yeah, we got a PA system. Yeah. We shared that on the Facebook page of it working, and it sounded really good. Uh, I understand it too. You got another little item that may help the spectators when they're up here. I heard you even had an ice machine up here. Yeah. Is there? We're, we're gonna. There we're getting that uh, hooked up too. <laughs> uh, well, the Deke and the Waters family, they're trying every way in the world to make this a place to bring your family, have a good time, and uh, be economical on it. And um, I understand, too, Deke, you guys are going to try to run the, basically the same rules of other tracks run so that if you've got a car, you can uh, run here one week, the next week, or the following day, or whatever, and go somewhere else uh, to yep. run. So, um I guess, uh, what are some of the classes you're looking at now again? Uh, right now, we're just wanting to run uh, five classes per night. We might add uh, six classes, uh, depending on what the car counts are for each class. Uh, but right now, it's going to be 604s, open wheels, front wheel drives, Crown Vicks, and then we're alternating uh, sportsmen and uh, 602s and limited late models. If you would, for the, those that might not know the 604s or 602s, would you make a quick explanation of uh, what those two? Basically 40 horsepower difference. Uh, the 602s are about 40 horsepower less than a 604. Uh, I think you, uh, you can run, uh, usually 602s, every rule is uh, placed changes or varies like usually they run the same shocks as 604s but now some of them run full shocks they're, uh, they're basically late models yeah they're late models and so they're uh, it's just the engine is the cubic inch difference uh, a yeah. little bit on them just the engine is different and, uh, maybe a little bit of weight difference i don't know they may weigh uh, the yeah, same i think they weigh a little bit less they can yeah. weigh a little bit less it um but uh, one of the classes it really is uh, it brings on a lot of questions got a lot of interest in from people talking to me about it is the Crown Vic class. Now I know that's a starter class. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what are you looking at on that? As far as rules or just? Uh, and uh, are you planning on running that class? Yeah, yeah, we're planning on making that a weekly class uh, whenever we run. Um, and the rules are pretty much like 411 and Crossful. It's just a stock car with a roll cage put in there. Um, it's pretty, supposed to be the cheapest way to get into racing. Well, one of the attractive things about the Crown Vicks, there were so many of them. Uh, the police force used them, the state troopers all used them before they got into the explorers and stuff that they do now, they're rear drive. Mm -hmm. So they're a pretty good platform for a race car. Uh, the cup cars are built on a modified form yeah. of them yeah. now with independent rear suspension and stuff. So it's a uh, uh, I'm proud you're doing that because racing needs economical ways oh, yeah. uh, for people to uh, get involved with racing. You can't just put everything on top because everybody, well, you don't know if you want to do it or not till you try it. 
try something sometime. Right. So I'm real proud of you're doing that. And there's another class I get asked about too. I believe it's the IMCA or, or SA Modifieds. They're an open wheel. Yeah, it's uh, going to be UMP modified rules okay. right now. That's mainly what East Tennessee guys run is the UMP modifieds. I know uh, the cars look a lot alike. I don't know the exact difference in them, but I know they uh, look a lot alike. Basically, from what I was told, uh, UMP is more an open motor rule, basically. I mean, uh, and then the IMCA, I think they're more of a restriction on the motor. So these are, uh, I suppose, and I'm not talking about the Crown Vic, they're all their own, but I suppose, and you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you're talking about crate motors. And well, they do run the crate motors, but they also run some just like like a 350 or a 383 motor or something like that. So, so there is some options there. Yeah, I'm not really for sure on the rules. I just know their motor rules basically different in a, uh, if than we, the UMP modifieds. I guess what we we're saying is if uh, if they're running it at Crossville, they can probably run it here. Yeah. Is it, we're basically, yeah. is that what we're saying? Uh, and 411, I think they're on UMP modified rules. Uh, and, um, I think, uh, I don't know what Wartburg runs but that's a pretty popular track it's a little popular yeah here, but i'd have to a, check on them I'm but it's a, totally sure on it, them. i know uh, wartburg is a popular track we're fortunate mm -hmm. to have these tracks in this area we're going to be real fortunate when this one gets up I, I get goose pimples every time up here at this one looking at it, i like the high banks it's got and just looking at it from here uh, you don't really know how to fully appreciate really uh how much it is banked but this sucker is uh it's really banked. It's a uh, yeah. It's similar, uh, uh, sort of a mixture between the old Buffalo Valley track and the old last old Sparta track. Mm -hmm. To me, is uh, I love that old track, the old Sparta track. I loved it real well. The yeah. last one, it was really, really good to me, and I guess that's why I liked it. Yeah. So well. Um, I know uh, you've done some extensive work too on the concession stands. Dick, are you about through with them or? Uh, well, we're done with the painting and uh, interior work, basically. Uh, we still got some work to do uh, in those suites, but uh, we may wait till next year to do that, uh, see how good it goes over. And then, uh, but now we still got to get like uh, a uh, stove for the uh, concession stand to grill hamburgers on and then hot dog cooking machine popcorn machine stuff like that so if they expect me and you to do some cooking we got to have a little more equipment so yeah, is that, yeah. Is, that what you're, is that what you're saying yeah but it's it's not that far off uh do you uh deacon i'm not gonna uh and this is sort of uh, uh do you have any and this is approximate time that you're looking at in the neighborhood of somewhere around well we're hoping for first week of august but that could change because we're kind of dependent on other people getting some other stuff done like the timing loop um and we still got to do some minor stuff around here but uh that's what we're hoping for well this uh the one thing i want to uh, to take away from here is that this track is going to be open it is going to be running and uh you guys are trying to make everything as right as you possibly can mm -hmm. before you do run it and i, I admire that you're, you're not going off half cocked just to get it open and get it running and things not turning out real good. Yeah. And uh, from uh, dealing with you guys, I know uh, you're doing everything that you can uh, to make it as good as you can yeah. to start with. We wanna make sure everybody has a good time and doesn't you know, leave disappointed or anything like that. I'll say this folks, uh, Waters family, uh, both in the off-road sector and they own all of it, but they've, uh, I've been working with them in the off-road sector uh, quite a bit. And, uh, they're honest people, good people. We're fortunate that they own this place now because uh, they're actually the only ones since I've been dealing with it that intends to really keep it open and doing everything they can to keep it open and make it work. And uh, I will uh, mention a off-road event we've got coming up July the 26th and 27th. That's the last week in July, but go to southern uh, fourwheeldrive.org for more information about that. They'll tell you the cost of it. And uh, Adam Woodley from Wide Open Design, he's uh, the primary sponsor of that along with uh, Southern uh, Four Wheel Drive. And uh, what, what have you got in the future that you're 
trying to do next around here. For the off-road part? Yeah. Uh, well, as soon as we get the insurance figured out for that, we plan on opening it after the uh, Southern Four Wheel Drive event. Um, that's And we're planning probably the first month, we'll, we'll probably try to open it every weekend to see how you know the turnout's gonna be. And then we'll kind of judge it from that. Um, but uh, we've also talked about just running it on the off weekends that we're not racing, so. Uh, Lots of options out yeah. there. <laughs> And I, I will take this and you correct me uh, if I say something out of place here, you put it back in place, D. Uh, the reason we can have this event with a, a Southern Four Wheel Drive and uh, Adam Woodley's uh, wide open design is Southern Four Wheel Drive has insurance for our events. That's the reason this will be an event there. I guess you might say at least in the park for that event. So, uh, and by then they may have the insurance for this, but Southern Four Wheel Drive will have their insurance part of this and that's the reasoning behind that and um southern wants to get everybody real acquainted coming back up here there are some old reunions that'll take place at the southern uh, four-wheel drive event here they are some guys that uh dropped out of off-roading a whole lot after this place closed but i know some of them are coming back to reunite with each other that's why i feel so fortunate that we've got the place back open and as far with it as we are right now mm -hmm. uh, you got anything to add no to I think that's pretty much it uh, right now well i want to thank deke for taking his time out off the dozer and stuff deke works on this place him and his dad and miss donna they work on this place themselves all the time i've been up here when they was topping trees and doing everything else that uh, uh needed to be done so uh like I say, I thank them, I appreciate them, and I want to thank the Northville Vineyard for being the sponsor of this podcast, uh, June and July, August. Those are good months for events, anniversaries, uh, weddings, birthdays, and such. So if you've got one of those coming up, contact the Northville Vineyard. You'd be surprised how much you can do with so little working with them. With that said and done, I'm Randall Davis. This is Deke Waters, and thank Roy Freeze for being the cameraman. See you on the next go-around.